I'm going to talk a little bit about how the courses at Ave Maria University has influenced my internship. They've been very applicable, um, particularly public speaking, and this is really essential to my day-to-day -day work, and that's because I teach programs and I also guide guests around the premises, and it's really essential that I apply these tasks because my job is public relations and guests' experience of the hike-in depends on me. Um, and I also was able to apply media society in the church, and that's because we learned about the importance of bringing Christ into our work. Uh, so being an intern here has brought together a lot of things that I love, and um, particularly a love of the outdoors, because I grew up camping and backpacking, so it made sense for me to work at a place like this. And um, having a love for the outdoors makes it a lot easier um, because it brings in pathos and I'm able to inspire the guests that come here to also enjoy the things that I love. And I also up learned to apply ethos and logos, um, and this helps an audience to receive a message well, but I also learned about schemes and tropes in public speaking, um, knowing my audience, being able to relate to them, but also apply different, um, different effects to the way that I speak to connect with the audience better. Um, and then proper volume and tone and a professional stance come into that as well. And um, converting a technological platform or um, converting a proposal to a technological program. Um, we covered a lot of those things as well, like, for example, not reading um, words off of a slide. And um, so the first thing that I learned was the importance of ethos, pathos, and logos. And this is because I lead a tour every single night, and so it's very important to keep those things in mind. And you can kind of tell, you can read an audience when they're zoning out or not interested in what you have, when you, what you have to say, um, and that's okay. That just means you have to adjust a little bit. Um, I also learned in public speaking not to just read off of a script, because that does sound pretty monotone, and people can tell when you're not really um, an expert about what you're talking about. So I did have to take some time to memorize all the facts, get to know it, walk around and give myself the tour. And that's because of the class that I took. And then I could tell guests were paying a lot more attention to what I had to say. Um, but Professor Hasso also said that it was okay to use a few note cards, um, which I, I do utilize, the, or I did at the beginning. And then as I've gained more experience, I've been able to make it less of a speech and more just sharing what I love. Um, and you can tell the guests really light up um, and they can tell that personal connection, which is a lot more interesting to people. I also employ logos by using specific terms and not using others. Um, so say we have a lot of different groups. So um, like when we have a bunch of teenagers, I might, um, I might use a more uh, youthful language, and then when we have older adults, I might make some music jokes from the 80s um, that they'll understand, and if we've got a bunch of little kids, I'll make it a little quicker so that they can pay attention, because um, I know when I was that young, I did not want to pay attention to a 30 minute long history brief. And then pathos is pretty easy to employ because I live here and I love what I do. Guests can tell um, when you really love what you're doing. This is something that I learned in public speaking, and so I simply share that, and that makes or that helps them have a good experience. And um, also using common, um, well, with tropes and schemes. Um, a trope is a different significance of a word, and then a scheme is an unusual arrangement of words. Now, as I've gotten to know this job better, I've been able to have a little bit more creativity with how I talk and um, and apply those skills. And so with um, with Georgia guests, I'll use, usually use um, Georgia locations um, just to get to know them a little bit better. And um, if they're local to the area, they understand what I'm talking about. But we have had guests that are not from Georgia. Um, like we had a group of women from the Middle East so I kind of had to adjust my references um, and then um, 
using tropes to play on words and using puns. Humor is, is really great for helping people stay or pay attention. Um, and that's why it's really important to know your audience, uh, especially if you have a really ex or diverse group of, of demographics of people coming in. Um, and public relations, there's a lot of different challenges every day. Um, so you have to be a little creative and a little flexible. Something always goes wrong <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> you just gotta adjust as it comes. Um, but then also just practically learning how to present in public speaking was really important. Um, having direct eye contact with my guests, um, moving around the room a little bit, using hand motions, volume, tone, um, being loud enough so that everyone can hear, not leaning on the podium, having a professional stance, bringing in a little humor, not reading off of the slide. Those are all things that I learned in public speaking. Um, that's possibly one of my most applicable classes to everyday real life. And um, also body language, which I guess I mentioned already. But media society in the church has also been really applicable, um, possibly most important actually, particularly if I'm gonna stay in a career of public relations, because no matter what I do, it needs to serve the Lord. And so Media Society in the church really taught me how the church needs um, evangelization within the media world. Um, it is a new technology, um, but we shouldn't be afraid of that because it's new. We actually need people to step out into this platform and use it for Christ. Um, so usually, uh, usually professional organizations um, you're not allowed to talk about religion or really, at least it can't be affiliated with the organization. So something I learned um, is just sharing faith privately. Um, when guests ask questions, they love to ask personal questions, take the opportunity to talk about Christ. Um, but then also related to Walter Ong, um, just leaving guests with the spirit of hope. Um, and hope is a Christian virtue. And working in the environmental world, you do run into a lot of fear. Um, and this is because of the use of media to show um, environmental collapse. And this, this has given rise to a lot of fear, which is from the devil, not, not from Jesus. Um, and so what I do is um, I give a lot of hope in my environmental programs. Um, our environment is in need of protection, but what I usually do is I talk about some of the ways that we are protecting our environment and how those have been successful because they have. And there's actually a lot of evidence, a lot more evidence um, to suggest that our environment is doing um, a lot better than it has in the last 50 years. And a lot of these policies that we've put into place have been successful. So that's one thing that I've done to um, bring Christ into my work and counteract some of the fear that society has placed on everybody. Um, and this is because of Pope Pius XII, his document called Ethics and Communications. Um, that's how we know that we need to be involved in this. Um, he wrote, great good and great evil come from the use people make of the media of social communications. Um, and that's all forms, film, music, podcasts, radio shows, movies, I just said movies, but you know, all that stuff. Um, and so that's why I kept in mind that idea um, in order to elevate man's dignity. Um, I also brought that into my blogs, which was required by this course or the internship course um, and talked about enjoying creation rather than enjoying nature. Um, just weird choice, but um, also sure to express gratitude and stewardship, which are Catholic virtues, while speaking to guests and encourage them to go out and enjoy our natural resources. Um, and this relates to the presence of the word. Walter Ong talked about there being an instance of states of confused um, excitement with disorganizing amounts of anxiety, fear, and hostility present. Um, he was talking about words. Words have a big effect. And that's why it's important to me to use words of hope, encouragement, and um, and joy when I'm talking to my guests because I know the environment can be a touchy subject 
and I think it's often misdisplayed. So in conclusion, um, I have used public speaking every single day in my programs and in my tours um, and just in public relations with our guests here. Um, I've also used the Class Media Society in the church for my mission here in communicating hope and encouragement and love. Um, and this is a really powerful tool in the media world and I plan on using that uh, for the rest of my career. So I really appreciate both of those classes and thanks for listening.